Traffic Control Transcripts just released this morning. ABC's David Curley is tracking all the new details. Good morning, David. Good morning, George. Even more vessels in the search area this morning. Still no wreckage. How little we know was highlighted by the head of this new search command as we finally, more than three weeks later, had the actual cockpit communication before 370 disappeared. As the search resumes this morning over hundreds of square miles of ocean, our first official look at what the pilots of the Malaysian 777 said. It was the red eye from Kuala Lumpur to Beijing. At 1240 in the morning, the jetliner is ready to go. From airport controllers, cleared for takeoff. From a pilot in response, cleared for takeoff, MAS 370. Thank you. Bye. Once in the air, the pilots are ready to connect with air traffic controllers. Lumpur Control, Malaysian 370 is the call. Controllers respond. Malaysian 370, Lumpur Raider, good morning. Climb flight level 250 or 25,000 feet. The 777 is then told to climb to 35,000 feet on its path to Beijing, and then the handoff to the next radar station. After that, critical communication systems are shut down. The jet starts flying back over Malaysia, makes more turns, and heads south over the vast Indian Ocean. The man now heading the search highlighted what a daunting task this is, saying we are working with just fragments of facts. We don't know what altitude the aircraft was traveling at. We don't really know what speed it was going at. Without debris, it's nearly impossible to deploy those pinger listening devices, with the batteries now running low on the pingers. Without more clues, we heard one of the more pessimistic assessments of what is ahead for this mystery. I think if we don't find wreckage on the surface, um, we are eventually going to have to uh, uh, probably, in consultation with everybody who has a stake in this, um, review what we do next. What does that mean? Is there the will and the money to search such a huge area methodically and slowly with sonar? And George, they're not even sure this is the right area. Oh my goodness. Okay, David, thanks very much. Let's get more now from ABC's aviation consultant, Steve Gander. And see, let's talk about these transcripts uh, first. Not a lot surprising there. No, it's not surprising, George. These seemed like very normal air traffic control transcripts. Uh, I didn't hear anything under uh, that was out of the usual. I think what does disturb me that it took so long to get this just basic facts out there. Uh, yesterday we also learned that it was three days last week that these international bodies were working in, in separate ideas on where this new search area is. So we continue to see examples of, of poor coordination by the Malaysians. Poor, uh, poor conduct of this investigation. It's really disheartening. The question is, is it just incompetence or is there something more at play here? You know, I, that's, a, that's a real question. Remember that Malaysian Airlines is an airline that is owned by the government. And so there's a conflict of interest here. The government is investigating itself. And this is a government that uh, plays political hardball domestically on a regular basis. And so there's a question that needs to be asked. Is this really just incompetence? Or is there some political domestic skullduggery going on here as well? And more signs this morning that we may never really know what happened. Yeah, it, the, the time is time is clicking, and and you heard uh, General Houston there say that the time is running out. The U.S. Navy yesterday warned us and said, "Look, this pinger locator we have, it only works within a mile. So if you look at that search area that David just pointed out, a mile. It's it, we have we have so much to cover that we just have to keep this in mind and, and manage our expectations of ever finding anything." Okay, Steve Gander, thanks very much.